Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we'll be building the US uh, two and a half ton six by six transport or I guess cargo truck um, from Tamiya in 135th scale. Uh, now I'm building this car for or ice truck I should say for a diorama um, that'll be coming out in a few weeks but I just thought I'd show you the construction of it. I began the build by assembling the engine, although in hindsight, I'm not sure if you really need to do this. Um, I ended up gluing down the hood anyway, and even if I didn't glue down the hood, you're really not going to be able to see the engine, so is it really worth it? I mean, you can build it if you want to. I ended up building it just because it was included in the kit, uh, but it's really not necessary if you don't want to spend the extra time. All the models fit very well as per usual with Tamiya quality and I was really pleased with the kit. Now all the wheels um, were plastic, the whole thing was molded in plastic, even the rubber part. Um, so I needed to paint that black, but before I did that, I went ahead and assembled all of them. Uh, this is a pretty time consuming process, this is also probably one of my least favorite parts of the kit. I mean I get it that it would be pretty expensive to include a bunch of rubber uh, tires, because there are a lot of tires included that you need to make. but. I think it would be nice and maybe TMA could even raise the price of the kit if they wanted to include some rubber wheels. But since there aren't any rubber wheels, I went ahead after I had finished gluing them and I sanded them down with some 220 grit sandpaper. Now the reason I use 220, um, that's usually pretty harsh for plastic models as some of you may know, uh, because it would also give the tires some uh, tread. Now I went ahead with some uh, ammo by MIG. Olive Drab Lustreless. Uh, this was, I'll put a link to that in the description. I really enjoyed using this paint, it works very well. Spray is very thin, little to no orange peel. I really enjoyed the process when I was painting it. Uh, I also used this previously on my Tamiya, I believe it was, what was it? Oh, my Sherman, obviously. Yeah, my Tamiya Sherman. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. You can also find it on my channel page if you want to check that out. After the painting was done, I made sure to leave the uh, cab section and the cargo set cargo bay section removable to make to make it easier to paint the uh, wheels. But I also I painted the wheels. I didn't have any footage of that, unfortunately. Um, but I also painted parts of the interior and also some little parts that would need to be black on the real truck. Now before I forget, I added the decals. Um, last time on my Sherman tank, I accidentally forgot to add the decals until after the weathering, so that was hard to fix, but I remembered luckily this time. So make sure you add that before you do the weathering. Now speaking of weathering, I started out with some chocolate brown and black paint mixed together in a 50-50 mix uh, to make this dark brown color. Um, and I applied this using an old sponge. 
This is supposed to simulate chipped paint. Um, now when you're doing this, you also want to make sure you're not pushing too hard down on the sponge as it'll leave a uh, sponge and it'll, it'll um, also take off the paint you just put down. So just lightly dab it across the surface in areas where the paint would have chipped away and revealed the metal underneath to the elements. After that was done, I went ahead with some of the original olive drab paint, the Ammo by MIG olive drab paint. I mixed a little bit of white in there with that to simulate um, areas where the paint hadn't completely chipped off but it had been nicked a little bit, so the paint would be a lighter color. Also areas where it might have faded. Now here is the uh, most important part, I think, of building this. I went ahead with some black paint, or flat black paint. Um, with floor polish and water. Now some of you in the comments have been asking why I use floor polish and that is because A it acts, um, well the main part is, main thing is it just um, it protects the paint from getting chipped off because I find when I just mix water in or I, when I use um, thinners, sorry the garage door is closing underneath me, but uh, the paint tends to chip off easier so I find by using floor polish it also acts as uh, sort of a protectant to the paint. Uh, now the method I'm using here, I brush it on, then I'm going ahead with a old paper towel and then dabbing it off. May I find this important not to wipe it off. The dabbing really helps to uh, spread out the color or also helps to add a lot of variation to the paint. Uh, one thing to note though, that it does tend to darken the color of whatever paint you're using. So just be, just, um, be sure to keep that in mind. But I think with the ammo, um, olive drab, it almost needs to be darkened in the first place as it comes out a little lighter. Then I went ahead with some Mod Podge mat, uh, some garden soil from outside, and a little bit of water. And I made a mud mixture with that, similar to stuff you can buy. Now, I applied this over the wheels, and what you'll see me doing here is wiping the excess on the side of the tires off with my thumb because in real life, mud usually does not tend to stick to the side of tires or um, on the raised areas of the tire treads. So after I had applied it on there, I went ahead with my thumb and just wiped it off. If you don't want to use your thumb, you can also just go ahead and use the paper towel as well. Now after that mixture had dried, I went ahead with some uh, chocolate brown mixed with a little bit of water. Almost the same color that we had used to chip the model. A little darker though, or a little lighter I mean, sorry. And I watered this down quite a bit and painted that over the mud mixture. Now the only reason I'm doing this is because the soil around me has a lot of clay in it. So um, that means that whenever I applied the mud mixture, the soil that I used from my garden was um, a little more reddish than I would have liked. So um, I just find that it's the easiest way to change the color of the soil is just to paint over it again with some watered down paint because the dirt uh, tends to soak it up. And after the weathering was done, or the first part of the weathering, I was really happy with the result. So I went ahead and ordered a stowage kit from Tamiya. I'll put a link to that in the description. I just glued those on. A great kit. Um, I recommend it. I still have a lot of things left over. It comes with so, many, so much stuff. It's insane how much stuff it comes with. It comes with backpacks, uh, canvases, sleeping bags, everything you need for a U.S. tank. So I definitely recommend picking that up, even if you're not making a truck like this. I also ended up using a little bit of little bit of, little bit of it on the Sherman tank I built previously, and yeah, just a great kit. So I'll put a link to that in the description of the video if you want to go check out that. And I painted it using dark greens. I'm sorry, I don't know what color green I would I used when I was painting this, um, but then I went ahead with a white and yellow mixture to make more of a canvas color, you know as I don't have the correct color paint. And I painted that over the uh, canvas sides. I'm not exactly sure what those are, but it seemed the appropriate color. And I went ahead with in the same process, just I mixed in a little more yellow. Actually, I believe this is um, Tamiya Dark Yellow for tanks. And I painted the backpacks with that and also the watering can. Then I went ahead with some of this, almost the same mixture as I had done with the mud. 
um, except this one has a little bit more brown. I, you'll notice I pretty much do the same mixtures for everything, just add a little different colors uh, to make washes. But oh, then I went ahead with some tissue paper. Um, there's a little bit of Mod Podge matte in there, in the little container. And I also mix in a little bit of water. And I dip the tissue paper in that to create a tarp. Now, I've seen a few people do this online. I've tried it in the past. In the past, it hasn't worked out. And uh, I think it worked out okay for me. Although the seam where the, uh, there's a small seam at the front of the trailer um, where the two pieces of toilet paper were joined. Now, I thought it was okay as it, in real life, maybe there would have been seams there too. Uh, but in reality, I'm not sure if that's realistic or not. I just really didn't want to redo the tarp. So I just decided to leave it there. And I painted the tarp with a dark green color. Again, I'm not sure if this is historically accurate, painting it with a dark green color. I just thought it looked nice and it complemented the colors on the tank and the truck. And it looks realistic enough. Uh, the, kit, all, the kit that included the um, stowage also includes some barrels and a lot of jerry cans and fuel cans, so I added those in the back of the truck. After that was done, I included the figure, and I was finished. Anyway guys, I really do hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, next week, or I guess the next video, I should say, we'll be building a convoy diorama through France. Now that is going to be very interesting as I'm doing a lot of neat techniques with that. I'm mounting a cobblestone street, and I have to carve hundreds and hundreds of bricks. So that is going to be really fun. Uh, anyway, wish me luck on that. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, you can uh, check out my other videos and my channel page. If you don't want to subscribe, I do hope you enjoy the videos and happy modeling, guys. Bye.